Hello, welcome to today's episode of Wellness Wednesday Workshop. Uh, we're going to talk about the foods that uh, decrease inflammation this week. Last week we talked about the foods that increase inflammation. Uh, so for this week, our uh, song clip is going to be... Foods that fight inflammation. Uh, so we're going to go back to last week. And we're going to talk about the foods that increase inflammation again. If you remember this chart from last week, I'm not going to let you see what's going on. But uh, the foods that increase inflammation are sugar, vegetable oil, fried foods, refined flour, dairy, artificial sweeteners, artificial additives, saturated fats, conventional grain-fed meats, processed meats, store-bought bread, alcohol, trans fats, fast foods, and genetically modified organisms or GMOs. This week we're going to talk about the foods that decrease inflammation, which are the foods that you want to be eating more of. Uh, so we're going to start at the top. Good oils. Olive oil and coconut oil are your two best oils. If you're cooking with it, uh, coconut oil is the way to go. If you are uh, just putting it on cold, olive oil is the way to go. Olive oil is much better at low temperatures, coconut oil is much better at high temperatures, plus coconut oil uh, thickens out when it's at room temperature. Uh, besides inflammation, they're also good for the heart, brain, and uh, they're good for the heart, brain uh, also. Let me fix that before it falls. Uh, the next food we're going to talk about is fish. Fish is high in omega-3 fatty acids. And fish is also uh, really good for just overall cholesterol, brain, uh, heart health. Uh, if you don't like fish, which a lot of people don't, well, learn to like it. But uh, grass-fed beef has as much uh, omega-3s as fish does. So grass-fed beef, not the regular garbage you buy at the store. Uh, nuts are the third thing we're going to uh, tell you about. Walnuts, almonds, hazelnuts are probably the best sources of anti-inflammatory foods. Uh, they're also good in, uh, with omega-3 fatty acids again. Uh, but the peanut, as uh, we learn, the peanut is neither a pea nor a nut. Discuss. So don't eat peanuts. Peanuts are a junk nut. Do not eat peanuts. Uh, they will not help you decrease inflammation. Fruits are really good, especially apples, blueberries, cherries, pineapple, raspberries, and strawberries. Uh, lemon is another really good one, especially if you put some lemon in your water. Uh, they are antioxidants. They help fight free radicals and decrease cellular damage. Uh, so, you know, eat some fruit. Uh, garlic. Uh, you're going to have to brush your teeth after you eat a lot of garlic uh, or use some mouthwash because garlic is going to make your breath smell awful. Uh, but garlic is also great for swollen joints other than just uh, decreasing the inflammation in your body. Uh, garlic, also if you eat a ton of garlic, uh, it can keep the mosquitoes at bay in the summer, so there you go. Uh, herbs that are uh, good at inflammation, there's a bunch, but uh, the ones that are good for inflammation and antioxidants are basil, thyme, and oregano. The ones that uh, are also good for reducing pain, curcumin, chili pepper, and cinnamon helps with blood sugar and uh, uh, your blood glucose. Uh, along with being anti-inflammatory. So basil, thyme, oregano, curcumin, chili pepper, and cinnamon. Chocolate. Chocolate lovers rejoice. Woo! Chocolate's good for decreasing inflammation. But not milk chocolate. No Hershey's. No Hershey's kisses. Not white chocolate. No. None of that. Dark chocolate. It has to be 70% dark chocolate to get any sort of health benefits. So if you see in the news where it says... Research says chocolate is good for your heart. The only chocolate that's good for your heart and that's good for anti-inflammatory purposes is 70% or more dark chocolate. Green tea, besides uh, getting rid of inflammation, green tea also helps reduce cancer and decreases heart disease. So get out there, green tea lovers. Uh, beans is the next one we're going to talk about. Beans, one cup of beans is approximately equal to 15 grams of protein, so you could actually replace uh, some sort of traditional uh, grain-fed beef with some beans, and that would help with your proteins. It also has fiber uh, and phytonutrients. We'll talk about fiber in a couple minutes, uh, but the phytonutrients in beans uh, include folic acid, magnesium, iron, zinc, and potassium, 
all important stuff your body needs, decrease inflammation. Remember, inflammation causes pain, causes all kinds of other issues. High cholesterol, high blood pressure is high inflammation. So it's just your body's reaction to something that's going on inside of it. So if you want to increase your overall health, you're going to want to decrease inflammation. Uh, a really good one uh, that people don't know about for inflammation uh, is onions. Onions also decrease your risk of heart disease and they decrease your cholesterol. So uh, eat all the onions. Again, same with garlic, brush your teeth and uh, maybe use some mouthwash because onions are gonna make your breath smell killer. Uh, foods high in fiber uh, are good for uh, decreasing inflammation. They actually lower your C-reactive protein. Uh, some of the whole grains uh, that are good for that Oatmeal, brown rice, quinoa, whole wheat flour. Uh, again, we talked last week about uh, processed flours. Do not get any processed, or as low processed as possible. Enriched flours, garbage. Uh, if you are gluten free, pretty much any of the Bob's Red Mill flours, uh, that's the brand Bob's Red Mill, uh, they're really good. Uh, at, my daughter's gluten free and we make a lot of gluten free stuff. And we make a mixture of probably 10 to 15 Bob's flours to kind of make it taste more like, you know, regular flour. Uh, we make some awesome donuts. Rarely eat them, but uh, there's actually no sugar in them. It's just honey. Uh, so honey is your best uh, bet uh, when getting rid of sugar. Raw, local honey. But anyway, back to the high fiber foods. Whole grains, which that's probably the worst of all the high fiber foods. Better bets are vegetables and fruit. Uh, the fiber inside the high grain foods, uh, even though fruit has a lot of sugar, you can digest it and uh, not get a sugar spike uh, with insulin with a lot of fruits because when you have fiber, it makes the digestion go slower. And when the digestion is slower, you don't get that spike of insulin. Uh, so your body can actually digest it. Uh, avocados. Uh, avocados are great foods. It's the good kind of fat. Uh, it has monounsaturated fats, uh, one of the only fruits that does. It's high in vitamin E, fights osteoporosis, and also regulates cholesterol. So if you're looking to lower your cholesterol, uh, eat some guacamole, basically. Not store-bought. Make it yourself. It's easy. Uh, and then the last uh, thing we're going to talk about to decrease inflammation, Young Living Essential Oils. Uh, they're not specifically made for inflammation, but... Uh, we talked about oregano, we talked about thyme. Uh, they have oils that are oregano and thyme. Uh, black pepper is also uh, another really good one. So the peppers uh, are really good at decreasing your inflammation in your body. Uh, I've got a whole list of other ones here too uh, that we can talk about one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe you can send me a message uh, if you are interested in that. So I have my whole list now. Over here, foods you want to decrease because they are going to increase your inflammation and they are going to make you hurt. They are going to make you sick. They are going to make you die prematurely. Foods that decrease inflammation will make you feel better uh, and will help you live a long, healthy life. Uh, go ahead and like, comment, and share. This was number 25 for the year, so yay us. And we'll see you next week. Bye.